let's talk about the Tesla Roadster, the supercar that basically everyone has been talking about nonstop since it's been announced. It's basically the car that breaks all sorts of records. So let's start talking about just the numbers basically, which is uh, the, the majority of what we have about the car. It starts with a 1.9 second zero to 60, a 250 mile per hour top speed, and 620 miles range. So let's go into that those numbers a little more. Now the zero to 60, 1.9 seconds, no car has done that. Like, uh, I think that the next quickest must be 2.2 or 2.3. So that is just absolutely insane. Now, the reason that they can do that is because they have electric motors in the car, of course, because it's a Tesla. So let's talk a little bit about how does that work? So how they do that is an electric motor, basically it can spool up really quickly and it can give you a, a really quick zero to 60 because it has lots and lots of torque and all that torque is available instantly. It's available right like at zero RPMs. Now in a gas engine, that torque may be available like 3,000, 4,000, maybe even 5,000 RPMs. So you don't get that acceleration until you hit higher RPMs. But that's different because in an electric car, you get it instantly. And that's why it can take off so, so quickly. Now the 250 mile per hour, this was more surprising to me because how electric motors work is that they can get a zero to 60 really, really quick, but they can't really get a good top speed. And that's just because it's a limitation of electric motors. And the reason that they haven't been able to get that is because, well, Tesla vehicles, except for the original Roadster, they have no gearbox. So that eliminates any lag in like switching gears. So what I think is that in the Roadster, they may have a gearbox to be able to reach this insane top speed. And we don't even know it could go even faster than that because it says over that. And then 620 miles range. Now, the Tesla Model S, 100D, which is the longest range Tesla Model S, is about 330 or so miles. So this is almost doubling that. And that's just absolutely insane. Like you can get from SF to LA and back in that many miles. And I think that they have done this because, well, for one, this car would be significantly lighter. I'm thinking that they must be making the body out of carbon fiber, at least the majority of it, and the rest out of aluminum, which is also very light. And they probably have put a bigger battery pack. So I'm guessing maybe like 150 kilowatt hours, maybe even 200 kilowatt hours. But then the issue is that when you get bigger battery pack, you have more weight and they really want to drop the weight because it should be able to corner somewhat well if they're trying to sell it as a supercar or as a roadster. Roadster is a good driving car and it has to be light for that. But anyways, let's scroll down and look at some more uh, specs. So as we talked about, 1.9 seconds and 4.2 to 100 and 8.8 .8 seconds in the quarter mile. Now, there are rarely any cars that break the nine second barrier in a quarter mile. It's just absolutely insane how Tesla has been able to do that. Now, one big thing that's over here is that this says base specs. Now, this just gets me even more excited because what Elon Musk, he said is that the Tesla Roadster the specs that they have announced, the ones that are here, these are only the base specs. It could get a whole lot better than this. He said that there will be an upgrade in the future, but they haven't announced anything about that. Basically, that was just on Twitter, and I cannot wait to see how much quicker will they be able to get the Tesla Roadster. Other thing that he said is that the Tesla Roadster may be able to fly short hops. I don't really get what does that mean. If any of you guys get what does he mean by that, let me know in the comments because whatever it is, uh, we'll see, I guess, since I think this is meant to be launched in 2020. So whenever that comes out, we're waiting. Other specs here, the base price is $200,000. That sounds like a lot of money, but in all honesty, that's really cheap. For a car that offers specs like these, you would expect it to be for $500,000. Like for example, the Lamborghini Huracan Performante, that one goes zero to 60 in maybe like 2.3, 2.4 seconds. It's got a similar top speed. That does not, 
that does not even come close to this. That's like $300,000 base. So this is just absolutely insane how they've been able to make it for so cheap. Uh, let's also talk about actually going back to the top speed. One thing that I forgot to mention is the Bugatti Chiron, the car that cost like $3 million and it's known for going fast, it's like 260 or 270 maybe miles per hour. So the Tesla Roadster for a car that's just a fraction of the cost goes so insanely fast. I just thought I'd add that because that is just insane. Anyways though, if we scroll down a little more, we see some more information about the car. It's designed for performance and aerodynamic efficiency. Now from previous Teslas, we know that they're very, very aerodynamic. They have very minimal drag coefficients and uh, that's how they're able to go, go so fast, of course. And looking here, we can see a lot of those same things. We can see that they've got a pretty mean diffuser here. Uh, the bottom is probably completely flat because all there is is the battery pack, so it's flat there. Over here, we've got sweeping curves throughout the car that allow for the air to just fly through. Other things over here, if you notice over here where my mouse is, there seems like a little vent over there. So what I'm assuming is that there's probably air that comes in through the front right over here, this vent here. And then it comes out back here. So that's probably to cool the brakes because I'm hoping that they make this as a car that can go around the track and something that won't overheat. Also over here, I think that there is a vent over here that could probably also allow you to cool the rear brakes. Other things, down here, there is a spoiler. It pops up, it'll allow you to have more downforce when you're taking turns. Other things though, I don't really see much aero in this car. Now, generally supercars, they have tons and tons of aero to give you more grip throughout corners. And I'm assuming that they probably didn't do that is because the car is already so heavy from the battery weight, so they probably don't need too much aero. They're just using air to cool down different components. Um, so there's, uh, there's also like a vent over here. Actually, you can see it more up here. There's a vent over here. Uh, I'm guessing that's probably to like cool the motor in the back and probably some of the air from here could use to cool the front motor. Even this big intake over here could be used to cool the front motor. So they're just using air to cool down the vehicle. They're not really using it to give it more downforce because, well, that's effectively increasing the weight of the vehicle from the air, and I'm guessing that they probably don't want to do that. Anyways, keeping going down the website, you see here the interior. Now, it's very minimalistic. In fact, here, I'll put a photo of a McLaren interior. Doesn't this remind you of a McLaren? Like this sweeping uh, touchscreen down here, and then McLarens have got dials over here, but you've got the armrest and... It reminds me a lot of a McLaren. Also, like storage down here, it looks looks quite a lot like a McLaren. I think that they've taken some design cues from them. Also, though, in this car, it seats four people, which is just insane. For a car that sets performance times of this Tesla Roadster, seating four people is unheard of. And it's amazing that Tesla's been able to do that, of course. Other things, if we look at the seats, you can see that they're very, very low profile probably of course because of weight also they've got a lot of side bolstering to keep you in place just like any other supercar would and lastly let's look at the steering wheel it's actually just like a, a little rectangular steering wheel nothing at the top and i'm not sure if that would be road legal i'm assuming that they're probably going to have to change that but we'll see what they do about that and one other thing is this vent over here you can see that it's the same thing as the Model 3 vent. So they're using technology that they've already done, of course. And that's also probably that's helping lower the price because they've already built so much of this, this technology. Anyways, going even further down, they talk about the glass roof. Now, a signature feature of a Roadster is the open top experience. And that is what Tesla is offering through this. By being able to remove the glass roof, you of course have the open top experience. And I've seen a lot of people that get mad because it's not a convertible. Now, the reason that they haven't made it a convertible is because, well, one, it increases weight because you have to have more, more motors to take down the roof. Second, it'll re remove some of the structural rigidity of the car because uh, 
To keep a light convertible, you would have to have a soft top and a soft top isn't really structurally rigid. And also if they had a convertible, it would be very hard to fit rear seats and still keep the car pretty short because if they, if they put in a convertible, of course they would have to get longer since there needs to be space in the back to store the stuff. And another thing that we can see in this top view is that there is no frunk in this car. Now, that's probably for the best because they're using that space to fit in all the components that help make this car go so insanely fast. They have probably the motors and all that stuff up here. And it's better that they put in bigger motors, of course, to get top speed instead of giving you the space to store other items. Uh, scrolling down, this is the last page. Basically, you can view the Roadster unveil. It's a short little clip where they bring out the Roadster at the end of the Tesla Semi event and you can reserve your Roadster for whenever it comes out. But anyways, that was pretty much, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the Tesla Roadster. It's an absolutely insane car with insane specs as you see here. And I can't wait for it to come out. And one last thing, the Tesla Roadster, I have heard that it's in the Palo Alto headquarters and there's a chance that we might actually go and check it out and we'll give you a first look at the Roadster and you can actually see the car. So watch out for that and subscribe because that could be coming in the next few weeks if the car is of course there. So anyways, thanks for watching guys and if you did like the video, give it a big like and hit the subscribe button. See you in the next one.